Hello, everybody. We're here again um, with another video chat. These have been really enjoyable. I, I've certainly enjoyed doing them and watching them. And today I'm here with Catherine Frude from St. Cuthbert's Mill. Hello. You have... Hi, Catherine. St. Cuthbert's has been fantastic in supporting us over the years. And um, the, their prize has been one of our, the most sought after in our um, selected exhibition. Everybody loves, uh, you know, beautiful watercolor paper. And so um, thank you very much for supporting us. Oh, pleasure. So the person who won this award was Justin Hawkes for his painting called Sequence. And um, Justin wasn't able to be with us today, but I have had a long conversation with him and I've got a lot of information from him. So we can talk about his painting. And I said to Justin, I would sort of be his proxy and in some cases possibly read out some of the, the things that he said, but at least be able to describe to everyone his process and um, which will show everybody why for Justin, you know, the quality of the paper is really important. So uh, it, it kind of, the, the his process, once he told me what his process was, I thought this was a perfect prize for him to, to award for him to have been um, given. So I'm gonna bring his painting up. Um, here we go. And um, this is, um, this is, this is sequence. Um, Catherine, do you want to sort of go through the questions we asked Justin, or shall I just wing it, whichever you prefer? Because these are very, very relaxed our conversations. <laughs> Sorry, I could, could you please? Because I can't actually yeah, hear the, uh, the question. Sure, not a problem. Um, okay, so we asked Justin about art school, and because he mentioned when he had an initial conversation with me that he went to art school, Justin went to Byam Shaw Art School where. His particular interest was shallow perspective. Um, you can see shallow perspective in the works of Matisse and Picasso, where they basically flatten the perspective in the, and so you don't get that depth. And Justin was always very interested in that. You get overlapping shapes. And if you look at Justin's work uh, that in, in our all of our exhibitions, really, you can see where he's doing all this overlapping of shapes. Um, space isn't very deep and it doesn't have to be three-dimensional. So this is what caught his interest at art school and what he has been focusing on. Um, he also mentioned that at art school, conceptual art was very popular and he was uh, particularly inspired by the work of Mona Hatoum. And he likes the idea that you could think about creating art in the same way a poet would think about poetry and a composer about music. Um, he also trained as a painting conservator at Neckingham Mill Studio, which is what he does now. That is part of his his um, his work. Justin is a conservator. So I then asked him what aspects of his art school time still influence his paintings. And he's, he particularly talked about the shallow perspective, optical illusions, like in the work of Ellsworth Kelly and Sol Lewitt. And he had the opportunity to meet two of Bridget Riley's assistants, one of whom taught him a watercolor painting technique, which he still uses to this day, and which he uses he used in this painting, which I'll get onto just now. Um, we I mentioned earlier that paper was very important. Um, and I asked him what paper he, he works on. And he said, basically, he has a range of papers, generally a middleweight paper, um, but he tries to pick different shades, different tones, so um, different levels of whiteness. And so he does use a variety of papers. One of his particular favorites is the Saunders Waterford Natural White Wove Knot 300 gram. And it seems about 300 gram is the weight that he finds is best for his particular technique. Um, we asked him if he'd always painted abstract and abstractions and he said yes. He did do a bit of life drawing and teaching at other art schools, but fundamentally that's been his interest. And um, his, when we quest, when we talked about what he's exploring in his work, he says um, he was particularly struck by a poem um, by Brian Patton where what Brian said during the performance was, please do not clap the individual poems. They will get jealous of each other, which I thought was quite fun. And he said, he uses the story to explain composition in music and paintings. Don't pick out a particular form or note or color as they could all get jealous of each other. The best notes in Beethoven work with each other. What Justin is trying to do with his paintings is actually have them 
all the shapes and the colors complement and work together. And so that's how he does his layering and that's what he's trying to achieve with his paintings. And now, are you ready for it? His technique, I have to say, when I read this, I, I was bowled over. I just thought this is really interesting. And I thought, I can't wait to tell Catherine about this because from a paper, point of view of paper, it's fascinating. So, Justin was taught, Steve Whittle, um, this is Bridget Riley's assistant, taught Justin how to adapt a bath for paper immersion. So when he starts his process, he says he often starts with six or seven sheets. So in his studio, he works on six or seven paintings at a time. He immerses all of the papers in these baths and he gets them really wet. He then takes them out and tapes them down onto a wet board. So he said it's taken a long time to work out exactly what kind of board to use. But basically the paper is wet, the board is wet, and then he paints on that wet paper. So that I think we can see in this painting that there is a lot of wet in wet. There's a lot of soft edges, which are, I presume are in the earlier layers. Um, he then leaves it and lets it dry completely. And when I said to him, how long do you immerse the paper in the water? He said two or three hours. Oh, wow. Exactly. I thought, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So he then takes the water, once the paper is dry, he says usually he comes into the studio the next morning and inspects all of these six or seven paintings that he has done the day before. And he said sometimes some of them just don't work for him. So out of that six or seven, one or two may be discarded at that stage and he'll continue with the rest. Um, and he repeats the process. So he puts them back in the bath of water. And I said to him, well, Justin, how do you get them to not, how do you get paint to not move? And he said, Basically, you put them in, you roll, what did he say? You, you, you roll them in like you would be opening um, curtains and they sit in that bath of water and he says the paint doesn't move. And then he takes them out again and yeah. repeats the process, puts them back, puts them back on the board and does the next layer. And he does this six or seven times. That's and he says, yeah, and at each stage, one, of the, one or more of those paintings might, might be discarded because he's not happy with the result. And so out of six paintings, it will probably he will probably end up with one or two successful paintings. So he's he's uh, and 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 I suppose you know when you think about that process, it's very clear why he really mm. needs high quality paper because mm -hmm. you know I, I can't think of many papers that wouldn't completely disintegrate after that process because you're yeah you know, being fire, exactly which is which is fascinating and he ends up with these incredibly vibrant colors because typically mm -hmm. when you wash a painting back i mean i've done this before where you take a painting that is that hasn't worked and you think oh well i'm going to shove it under the tap and see if i can wash it off and 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 see what what happens of course you're taking all the sizing off at that stage and you usually end up with the ghost of the original image um on the paper at least a little bit of it will remain but it changes you know so so and and you're never going to, I um, mean, I've never done that and then found that the color stays vibrant. But then to be fair, I'm usually running it under a tap, which I think is a different process to what he's talking about because Justin is talking about laying the painting in the water, um, which I'm sure is a much more careful process when you mm -hmm. talked about, um, you know, unrolling it like curtains. Yes. Uh, there's obviously a, a level of care that's taken there, which isn't, isn't not even remotely like washing right. off a paper. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I did say to him, I said, Justin, so, so am I, have I understood this correctly? You know, did, does it take you six or seven days to create these paintings? And he said, yes, it does. Because of course, each, pro, each um, cycle in the process would take him mm -hmm. at least 24 hours if he was going to, and, and he did say to me, I come into the studio in the next morning and, you know, to see what, what's there. So it's, it's a very intensive process which um, results in something really interesting. And he's certainly got that flat perspective, hasn't he? With mm -hmm. the shapes overlaying and you being able to see the shapes through them. So- the Combination of what would have started out as six paintings down to down to one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite, and I think also it sort of illustrates how sometimes you have to be really patient with painting. You know, mm -hmm. this is an exercise in patience and in surprises as well, because I'm guessing, you know, you might come in the next morning and just not really know what what you're going to see on the paper. 
mm. uh, because so much of that is going to be a bit of a happy a accident, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, I asked Justin just if there was anything else he wanted to cover. Um, and he said he, so once he sort of described that, he said he is inspired by the work of Frank Bowling, who was one of his tutors at art school. Um, and also the other, another artist who inspires him is our SEAW member, Steffi Butler. And Steffi, of course, also uses layering when she does her portraits. She uses layers of transparent and shapes that overlap each other in order to create, create um, the, the depth of perspective in her portraits and her watercolors. So uh, those are two artists that Justin finds inspiring. So I thought that would be um, interesting. So there we go. So I found it really interesting chatting to Justin and I wanted, I thought you might find his paper process really yeah. interesting. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away that it goes back in to be re-soaked so many times yeah. and, and uh, still keeps the vibrancy um, as yeah. well, um, which uh, I know some of the papers he uses is um, Saunders Waterford and actually having that gelatine layer on there, the gelatine is usually quite good at um, locking a pigment onto a sheet so it's harder to wash out. After. Yes. Oh, and that may be part of what he was talking about. He said it took him quite a long time to find paper that would work for his process. So that may be part of it because he said to me, he said, I don't know the chemistry, but he said there's like a membrane that stops the paint mm. from coming off. And that must be what he was talking about with the gelatine. That's the gelatine. Yes. OK, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, that that'll be why that paper works so well for him. Well, I, I thought that was fascinating. I have to say, you know, I it wouldn't have occurred to me to put a painting in water in order to continue painting on it. If that mm. makes sense for yeah. me, putting immersing pay, uh, you know a piece of watercolor in water once it's already been painted on is usually because I've made a mistake and I'm trying to get rid of it, <laughs> and I'm trying to fix the mistake. So to do it deliberately, I just think is is really interesting, absolutely fascinating. All right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful painting. It is. It's lovely, and I think um, yeah, I'm you know fantastic that it has been. Get, that the judges chose this one for the award. Um, and as I say, really appropriate when you consider the way it was painted and fascinating because it was, has allowed us to find out about Justin's technique, which is, is it's um, so unusual. Demanding his technique, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, absolutely. The winner. Yeah, fantastic. Catherine, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. And thank you Pleasure. once again for supporting us. Pleasure. Great. Thank you. Enjoy very the rest of the afternoon. And you. Thanks. Bye-bye.